Hello, my front end friends. If you clicked on this video, you probably know of the problems that can come up with the viewport height unit, such as we can see right here where I have this. And this is currently on my phone, but we'll look at the big version of it up there. Uh, we can see there's a red block down at the bottom that we, we can't see all of, and it's really important information. And I have to scroll to be able to get to that even though on the header here, the height is set to 100 VH. And this problem doesn't happen on desktop because on desktop, we don't have these things at the top, the address bar and all of that, that actually move away. Like when I scroll, you can see that it's it's moving away. And so it's this UI element that is sometimes there and sometimes not. And the VH doesn't take that into account. So if that's completely gone, now I actually have my 100 VH because we have the entire viewport. But luckily there are new units in CSS that we can use to solve these problems, which are SVH, DVH, and LVH. And I have them all set up on this. This demo site is linked below as well as the GitHub repo which has all of this, so you can check it all out. Uh, and play around with them. But you can see here I have a version using all of them. And DVH is dynamic viewport height. And it sounds like it's the fix that you want for this, especially if you're doing mobile apps and menus and stuff where you always need the menu to be at the bottom where the different choices are for the user. And that's because you can see everything, it, it fixed it, right? You can see my red bar is there at the bottom and I didn't do anything in this section other than changing the height to be 100 DVH instead of being 100 VH for my entire header. The thing with the DVH or dynamic viewport height, it will be looking if these UI elements are on the page or not and it will make them go away and it will adjust the space needed. So if I scroll a little bit there, you can see that now it's taking up the whole thing. And if I go like that, it actually shrinks it down. But that does mean there's a little jump there because the height of that element is changing depending on whether the, the UI element, the address bar is at the top uh, of my screen or not. And so it does create little layout shifts when you scroll. And as long as you're going this way, it's fine. But as soon as I go up again, there will be a little layout shift because now it's taking it into account and it's not really animating it back in and out along with that thing at the top. It waits until the scrolling is finished and then it updates it. Now it's a little bit annoying. You get those little jumps in height, but this can still be really useful if uh, depending on the use case that you have. And there's 100% times you might want to use this. Uh, but the other one that you might want is SVH. And this is small viewport height. And you can see in this case, it's also working for me. But when I scroll, there's no jump in content. And the reason that there's no jump in content now is because it's it's using the small version of the viewport height. So it's just always assuming that one of those elements is open at the top. And for a page like I'm on now, where it's just a landing page where I need that header to take up the whole room. So I have that bar down at the bottom. This is perfect. It's exactly what I need. Cause as soon as you scroll a little bit, no one really notices that they're, you know, it's not taking up the entire height, right? Like it's just always basically lining up with <laughs> however we have things set up. So if, if it's not like a web app where you need something locked in the bottom, then I think this is the perfect solution. Now there is the other version, which is the LVH. And LVH is sort of a lot like VH, to be honest, where it's always assuming that those things at the top are not there as our top or bottom Safari or even on Android. There's, uh, I know Firefox has the address bar at the bottom. Uh, so it's just assuming that those UI elements are always closed. So in this case, I'm always gonna have uh, some overflow and as far as my experience with using LVH so far is it's always basically the same uh, oops, not as that one as my original version with just the regular VH. They seem to work very much the same. Uh, personally, I originally was using a lot of DVH and I've, I've switched over to using SVH for most things. I find it's the more practical of the ones to have uh, just because it sort of solves the problems I do since I'm usually doing website layouts. But I do think DVH could potentially be very useful for when it comes to web apps. The one thing with this, A, is browser support, but that's not a big deal. We'll look at a solution to that in a second that isn't perfect, but at least it gets the job done. But the other thing is, it, if you had your keyboard coming up, and I should have put a form on here or something so we could have the keyboard come in, but if your keyboard were to come in because you're going on a form element or something like that, it's not going to adjust the height of the viewport at all. It's a virtual keyboard. It's not really considered part of the browser's viewport size. It's only these things like I have at the top of the screen right now, the top thing there, that top bar, uh, it, those, or, you know, if you're on Safari or any other browser at the bottom, the address bar and other things like that, 
It's the UI elements of the browser itself and not the virtual keyboard coming in, which for some people, you know, that's part of what they want is to incorporate it with the keyboard. It's not gonna work for you if that's what you're after. Now, as far as potential fallbacks go, you could use this code that is right here where we have just the viewport version of it. And then we have the DVH or SVH or LVH or whatever <laughs> follow up when you need after that. So if it's an older browser that doesn't currently support these newer units, which they actually have pretty good support, as you can see right here, this is as of the time of recording, and there'll be a link down below that has the browser support uh, numbers as well. But yeah, going back to the code right here, what's gonna happen is the browser's first gonna see the, the first dec declaration we have there, which is our viewport height, but then it's gonna see a second one, which is our dynamic viewport height, and it's gonna go, oh, I'm just gonna use that one instead because it's second and it's overwriting the one before because that's how CSS works. But if the browser doesn't understand the DVH, it just goes, oh, I don't know what that is. I'm gonna ignore that rule, which means it's still using the original 100 VH. Not a perfect experience, but it's better than nothing. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to know some other really exciting CSS units that are even cooler than this, there is a video where I look at container query units that you can see right here. And with that, I would really like to thank my enablers of awesome who are web on demand, Andrew, Simon, Tim, and Johnny, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.